Greetings, 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 my friends, my family, my sweet lovers. Um, so, now I would like to have a conversation with you about the truth of the work we are doing right now. We've been traveling for a long time through the mines, caverns, through the dark cave, seeking an underlying form of creation which allows us to create reality and flood the scenes of this reality in the dream. It is a means of reaching our hands between the, the veil, grabbing an idea, intention, of flight and pulling it into physicality, embodying the wizard within me. Now, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster of a journey, and what I've now understand <clears throat> is all forms of creation. Actually, really, throughout the day, the day is a dance. Um, the day is a dance in perception. Each moment, the script in our mind is moving, is running a treadmill. Thoughts are being thrown around, and those thoughts are crafting the reality, or rather the lens with which we perceive the reality in front of us and how we perceive the reality is how we interact with it, how it interacts with us. And so these thoughts are constantly shaping the very dialogue that we and the very interaction we have with the universe before us. Each day is a dance. Each moment is a choice. It is a game to discard the sh thoughts that really aren't doing shit for you, whether they be of lack or just bullshit and not ascendant, ascendant. And it is a game between throwing the shit away and finding a station of the highest tune, the highest key. Um, for example, one thing that works that has been really fucking sexy for me is tuning to the station of my future self on a podcast like Joe Rogan talking about how he found his form of creation and how he built this magnificent empire production retreats and how he birthed a new world order. Um, and when I say Joe Rogan, really the interview is actually also myself because I'm interviewing. Yeah, it's, it's a cool one. But... In this sense, it's like every moment we are tuning to, every moment we are pointing forward as we move through time. Every moment we are creating reality in the thoughts we think, in the actions we do. Every moment we are birthing reality anew. And most of the time, we're not pointing in the direction we really want to. Most of the time, the subconscious mind, which has been programmed and conditioned up from everything that's happened to in our life, from our parents to our friends to our culture and society telling us what to do and how to be, um, it is governing us in creating our finger pointing direction and we can step out of that choose and this is why like a mantra is incredibly incredibly helpful incredibly powerful um, because it allows us to daily have a moment where we point our finger and say this is where I choose to go this is where I choose to be and the more we do this the more we cultivate energy in that direction and all the other shit starts to fade away because we continue to point, continue to point, continue to point, and now all these habits and that used to hold us back from going that way just, just tend to fall off um, because we rise and shit just stops. Once we 
hit a certain level of elevation from just slow and steady progress. It's like we don't care to eat shitty food anymore. Once we reach a certain level of our ascension, we like high sugary processed shit just doesn't appeal to us. So we could, you know, with somebody with an eating disorder, for example, we could treat the eating disorder as the issue and say this is what we have to do for food and for health to get back on, to get on track. And for some that might work. Um, but if we look at everything as a whole, like a whole holistic experience and we see the tr eating disorder really less of uh, the problem in itself and more a symptom of a more foundational problem, um, we can basically look at healing as pointing in the direction of health, of what it means to be a flourishing human being and slowly and steadily implement practices that walk there. And once we get to a certain point along that path of continuing to walk in that direction, the things that we thought were so incredibly terrible and caused us so much anxiety and struggle will fall off as we shed layers and layers of skin and it might be it will be slow at first but soon we'll turn around and be like oh my god i don't do that any of that shit anymore back to the core of what i'm trying to say what i am saying every day we are constantly creating our reality whether or not it's conscious or subconscious, whether that's subconscious or conscious, right? So, what's, how can we radically point our finger in the direction of our dreams, of our high self, and allow that the emotion and the energy we pour into the focus of that direction? How can we do this, give this pointing as much energy as possible? And how can we minimize the amount of time that we spend pointing in other directions that are not serving us? I'll cover the first thing. Well, basically it comes down to cultivating moments of intention. Um, but the biggest thing, and the main core of what I'm saying, is really in a single experience. A single cultivated moment that echoes into reality's infinity so loudly and so powerfully that it instantly shifts us into that direction it is it is in creating a portal instantaneously into the reality of our painting and our choosing it is the multi-dimensional journeying through the portal so how do we do this pair a hyper focused intention a painting an image a mural of reality we seek to embody with an elevated state of emotion the scream light embodied lightning of the thunder beings grounding heavens power and energy here on earth in changing the vibration in which we breathe the perceptual reality in which we see How do we douse people in a single experience that changes their life forever and aligns them radically with their truth?
And obviously there's going to be like a system of integration that has to happen afterwards to make sure the process, the progress remains on projection, but first it's the big, it's the experience. Second, it's the integration of it, which is all about daily practice. We can change our lives to be whatever it is we seek simply by developing the ability to implement ritual in our life. Things we do every day, and it doesn't matter what it is we do every day, just that we be, step into the state of being in which we are doing this ritual that we have stated for us to do every single day, so that we are following the guidance of ourselves in a radical way, in devoting time to something that the past self, the high self, has said that we are going to do. So regardless of what other actions we are making during the day, as long as we hit the ritual, we are pointing in that direction. And when we cultivate it, we are pointing in that direction radically over a long period of time. So what is this direction? Where am I pointing? Part two. You nervous? No, I'm not. Where am I pointing? I'm pointing in the direction of the highest resonation. It is a synthesis, a simplistic synthesis. It can be begin as an abstract mural, right? Begin as just a collision of shit. And that's the point, just to hyper-intentionalize the space. Begin in intention. Hyper-intentionalize the space. And don't worry about how it looks. Allow it to be abstract. Elements of inspiration pulled from everywhere, and the more elements of inspiration we have, the more radically we feel the inspiration itself, and the more clear, basically it's like we're each piece of inspiration, each painting, each song thrown into one space is something that inspires us. When we throw all these different elements of inspiration at a canvas, like each element is a color that we are splattering abstractly, soon the more paint we lob on, the abstraction takes form. And in the same way that we see faces in the clouds, we begin to see the underlying form of the abstraction, which is a direction, which is an actionable intention which is an action, of, which is a, a scene. And from that abstraction, we can pull scenes from the future, just as we would memories or stories or dreams. And we can pull them. And what we are, are pulling is a synthesis. We are divining a synthesis of all of our intention, all of our inspiration. We are very literally creating a portal to the highest self. That portal, we can then derive and witness scenes come out of. These scenes come together to create a story of a direction. And the more we can add to the story of our direction, the more we can see this, like, speak the story of the character coming out of this portal, the higher, faster, stronger, more developed, more refined this process is, the sexier it is in motion. All it takes is a collision of intention. So, that's how we basically, that's how we find the intention, find where it is we're pointing. 
And the more we do it, the easier it is to do it. And throughout the day, when we have a moment to cultivate intention, even if it's just a regular reminder that keeps popping up on your phone, it's a reminder to tune into the channel of that portal. Tune into that stream of self, which is automatically going to be taking you to the highest plane, highest plane, highest plane. And we can keep on adding layers and layers and layers and layers onto that, that one canvas, that one space. And through as those layers collide, there's going to be an interesting abstraction to occur. We take snapshots of the abstraction and we pull it aside. Each snapshot is a scene. All right? Intention is the key. So now I've cultivated the collection of the Storm Council. Um, and I have Akira screaming, shifting away from the screaming into love. Now I'm going to blast it with Storm Council Ocean. Receive a new portal. Sorry, back to Earth for you. Um, So the second part, now that we have a portal, we understand how to create the portal to the transcendent self. Um, the second part is to basically learn to work with it from a metaphorical basis. Learn to work with it ethereally. Learn to work with it in your imagination. And this is where it gets really interesting. <clears throat> because we can find that it is actually a, an instrument and we can use this as and what we are is an instrument and we can use this portal we've created um, as basically a tuning fork that we run through our body and imagination is reality um, at the highest levels of athleticism one of the a very widely practiced is visualization, such as a tennis player um, practicing like a, a big part of very high level tennis players um, practice regimen is visualizing the game, visualizing that perfect form. And when we visualize the perfect swan, form swinging the ra racket, our brain integrates that visualization experience into the same place it integrates memory. In a practice known as psychodrama, uh, a therapist will basically work with uh, different people who have had traumatic experiences, whether it be getting beaten by their parents, being neglected, being raped, and they will work with an individual in a group setting where each person will play a different role, and they will reenact the scene of the patient's trauma. But now, when they reenact the scene, the patient actually shifts into a This is actually something I really want to do. Psychodrama. The patient actually shifts into a state of I'm sorry when they reenact the scene they change the events so instead of the patient being or the victim being raped she's able to beat the offender like beating up a doll or she's able to um, speak what is on her heart to her mother all the things that she's been holding back for all these years and finally get to speak that story finally get the closure of the experience finally get to move on with their life as a result and it, the memory itself, the experience in itself isn't necessarily changed in the mind but it's the entire lens, the entire cushioning, the entire framing of the experience that changes which it's never the experiences that are bad in themselves, it's our perception of what happened to them that pushes us forward. There's a man who's been through the Holocaust, probably the most famous book written from a Holocaust survivor, um, A Man's Search 
for meaning. I believe it's Ellie Wiesel. And he was able to take such an absolutely fucking terrible experience watching so many of his loved ones die, being enslaved at a camp where they were burning his his friends all around him and, and treating them like shit. He was able to take one of the worst experiences of being human and shift it into the most powerful experience of what it means to be happy and search for beauty in life. It's not the experiences that happen to us, but how we perceive them, which makes us either the creator, the grateful creator of our reality, or the victim of it, which is our dance, right? If we are stepping into the role of the victim, we are going to be the victim. If we see ourselves as the victim of the past, we're going to be a victim of the future. If we see ourselves as the phoenix who is rising out of the ashes, if we see ourselves right now as life, I've gotten fucked in a lot of ways, but it's okay because right now I choose to see myself as, as the hero of my own life's movie. What would the hero of my own life's movie right now, if I began the script right here and now, what is he doing? She doing? How are they shifting their reality? What moves are they making here and now? And I'm going to write that story. And that story is the portal that I open this up with you. I don't know what it is I'm necessarily doing, where it is I'm going, but I know that this is cool, and this is cool, and this, I think, is beautiful. And all of these are creating an abstraction, and I'm I'm quite seduced by the abstraction, and I'm kind of walking in that direction. I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means, and then boom! I understand why the fuck I'm here right now. I'm so, I know what it is my purpose in life is to do here. It's not about what career I'm choosing, no. Fuck that shit. It's so much deeper than anything they've ever said. And it is so much more beautiful than I could have ever possibly imagined. And I'm stepping into this very new, very beautiful, absolutely surreal, magnificent reality unfolding around me because now I see that I am the divinity. Wow. So. We understand now how to cultivate intention. How to choose our direction. How to point our finger. Now, we go into part two. Which is how to pair this hyper-focused intention with a radicalized state of emotion. And when the two come together, we create reality. Part two. Creating your reality.